If the freedom to dream were a spear, I proudly present a human being who tonight represents that spear's most honed tip. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants of the 80s Golden Globe Award Ceremony. The First World War claimed millions of lives. The Second World War claimed tens of millions of them. There will be no Third World War. It is not a trilogy. Ukraine will stop the Russian aggression on our land. We will make it together with a whole free world. And I hope that all of you will be with us on the victorious day, the day of our victory. So much time. Ukrainians? Yes, Ukrainians. Oh, I'm so sorry, that's a mistake. I was calling to Montenegro. For... Mon Mon Montenegro? Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah, my... <clears throat> my congratulations. Yes. All praises to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai and the Holy Spirit. Yahweh is the true name of our Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. The Rakah Kodash is the Holy Spirit. As always, double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone, the taught us the truth, and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to you, Akim, that are the prophets and the teachers that are pushing this truth, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures throughout the four corners of the earth. To the rest of you believers, you Akim and few Akwathium, and you children, that are waiting for these last and final prophecies and the return of our Lord and Savior, Havashai. Peace be unto you, inshallah. There will be no World War III. There will be no trilogy. This is a statement that was made by Vladimir Selisky on the Golden Globe, you know, this past Tuesday, in which, you know, he made a special appearance. And I find it very odd that in the midst of a war you find the time to make an appearance at the grammys to make an appearance at the golden globe you know um he wanted to make an appearance at you know the oscars last year but he wasn't allowed to but was able to make an appearance you know at the grammys you know this year in which um, when you go into the back history of Zelensky, you know, he was a comedian slash actor, you know, slash uh, a dancer. You know, he appeared on uh, uh, many different, you know, TV shows and, you know, uh, comedy, you know, uh, sets, as well as uh, Dancing with the Stars, you know, the Ukrainian version of it. And now he's the president you know, of Ukraine. And one of the acting gigs that he had, he actually played 
uh, the president of Ukraine within a TV series. So I guess, you know, he, he, he acted in the role, you know, so good that they determined, you know, to make him the legitimate president in real life, which shows you that these presidents that are ruling within these particular countries are nothing more than just actors. All right, they're playing a role and they read from a script and that's what this guy is doing. And I believe that this statement that he made in which he said there will be no World War III, there will not be a trilogy, that he was reading from a script, you know, and the majority of them read from teleprompters, you know? So what is that? That's nothing more than a script, you know, which um, their PR team, you know, put together uh, of the, uh, the statements that they are to say which um, Zelensky is nothing more than a puppet president that is set up by the rich elites. All right. In which um, they're being that country, Ukraine, is being backed by the West. All right. To name the particular country, the U.S., which they're receiving billions of dollars in aid, you know, to fight within a proxy war against Russia, which ultimately this is a war between the United States and the West, you know, and Russia. But the ones that are fighting within this war is the Ukrainians, which ultimately make this what? You know, this does make it World War Three, but we haven't reached the heated aspect of World War Three in the regard to where it turns nuclear. All right. So right now. It's, it's, it's cold, but it's being fanned. It's being heated up, all right? And eventually, it's going to reach the, the hot point to the point where nations are shooting nuclear weapons at each other. And it will reach that point once the MOTB, which is the mark of the bestia, the mark de la bestia, is online and the whole world is put in a position to where they have to drop the currencies that they're using now and use digital currency via, via a digital wallet, which will be the RFID CHIP and the brain CHIP. That's when this war is going to heat up to the, the point where it becomes nuclear. Now, within World War One, all right, you had which World War One was fought July 28th, you know, 1914. And there was around 40 plus million lives, military and civilians, all right, that were uh, taken. In World War II, which was September 1st, 1939 through September 2nd, 1945, it claimed around 85 plus million lives, military and civilians. And you have World War, uh, you have World War III which will claim hundreds of millions, if not billions of lives, okay? Which this war eventually is going to reach the climax to the point where Yahweh Shai and the angels even come down and get involved within this war. It, it uh, quotes that within the book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter, where it says, um, and I'll begin at verse four. It says the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as a great people, a tumultuous noise of kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Now you're going to have ICBM missiles all right, that are used within World War Three, and they're being gathered together like as a great people, you know, like as a great army. So the ICBM missiles are like an army in themselves, all right? They're going to be used within this great war for the purpose of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. A tumultuous noise of the king, uh, the kingdoms of the nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustereth the hosts of the battle. When you go into the word for mustereth, the word there in the Hebrew is uh, Pequod, and it says to attend to, to muster, to number, to reckon, to vi visit, to punish, to appoint, okay, to appoint, to set over, make overseer, appoint an overseer, to commit, to entrust, to commit for care, 
So Yahweh is, is the one that is appointing, all right, that is watching it, overseeing this particular battle to make it to happen in the earth. So who in the hell are you to say that it will not happen? All right, to say that there will not be a World War III, to say that there will not be a trilogy. There will be a World War III and it's going to cause mass destruction and mass death around the world, around the world. All right, he said in, in World War I, it claimed, you know, uh, uh, millions of lives. You know, in World War II, it claims tens of millions of lives. There will be no World War III, as if you're so sure. And the time is going to come where even your very own life is going to be claimed within World War III. Zelensky, you know, if, if you're not destroyed before then. But in the book of Nahum 3 and 3, um, it says, The horsemen lifted up uh, both bright sword and glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses, and there is none in of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Yeah, because... Within this great world war, there's going to be mass casualties. The lives of, of, of hundreds of millions, if not billions, will be claimed within this devastation and destruction of this war because this war is going to be fought unlike any other war has been fought. You know, which um, in ancient wars, they fought with, with swords, you know, and shields. You know, they ran at each other. They clashed. You know, they would they would uh, thrust each other through, you know, with the sword, with spears, you know, uh, pe uh, men would get slain with arrows, you know, men were getting stuck through the liver or through the through the stomach, through the gallbladder, all right, intestines being ripped out to being fought with uh, uh, um, guns, you know, and, and now it's going a step further, you know, where they use particular things such as drones. They use uh, uh, aircrafts, you know, that are that are drones that can be flown and could uh, uh, shoot, you know, missiles. And also they have nuclear silos. So instead of actually having to send military men to war, although this is going to still happen within World War Three. They, they don't necessarily have to send soldiers into the battlefield, although it's going to happen anyway. So this particular war is going to be fought not only with soldiers on the battlefield, but with fuel of fire, which will be the ICBM missiles, the intercontinental ballistic missiles. You have something called the uh, atomic board of bulletin or the atomic bulletin board or something along the lines of that. And what they do is monitor the Earth's situations and how close we are to a nuclear apocalypse. And the last that they moved it, it was 100 seconds to midnight. So the world events dictates how close the Earth moves towards thermonuclear destruction. So they know that there will be a thermonuclear destruction and that, and that clock is still ticking. But we don't need that clock to measure how close we are in the regard of that particular war happening because we have biblical prophecies to do so. So when it's time and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is ready, Isaiah 95, for every battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. In the NLT it reads, the boots of the warriors and the uniforms bloodstained by war uh, will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. All right. Because in this particular war, that's how a lot of soldiers are going to be killed. That's how a lot of people are going to be killed. Uh, Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to shoot. All right. Laser beams from the chariots. I didn't get to that scripture, you know, but I'll go back and read it. The book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter. I should have started up a verse, Isaiah 13 and 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones, and I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. So the mighty ones are dealing with the angels. All right, even the angels are going to come down and get it in 
All right, within World War III. All right, Yahweh Shah is going to be leading the charge. Now, in America alone, according to uh, the, the census.gov, all right, which is wicked as hell to do a census, but Esau Edom does it anyway. And the fact that they do census shows you that this is Rome all over again. All right. Which shows you that within this place, there was an image that was created into the beast. Now, I'm going to just grab this just to back up that point. This is the book of Luke, the second chapter and the second verse. It says, and this taxing was made when Serenius was governor over Syria. So this is talking about the taxing that was going on all right, around the time of Yahweh's birth, birth that was uh, um, done around the time that Serenius, all right, which was a Roman, what, what would you call him? Like a, a, like a governor? All right, he was set up to be a governor by a Caesar Augustus. But going into the word for taxing, the word there is apographe, okay? And it says a writing of transcript from some pattern and enrollment or registration in the public records of persons together with their income and property as a basis of a census or evaluation. An example that it might appear how much tax should be levied upon each one. See, so it was a census that was done when it says uh, taxing. Now you have something today known as the census that goes around the Americas, all right, in which they calculate the people, they calculate their income, they calculate their goods, they calculate who belongs in their household, basically so that they can know how much to tax, you know, or what to levy upon the people. Now, um, according to the census.gov, it says the United States Census Bureau project that the United States population will be 334 uh, million, 233,854 on January 1st, 2023. New population estimates and projection and another demographic data up to the year 2100 for 30 countries and areas in the uh, international database, IDB. So it's projected that 334,233,854 people will be within the United States. Now subtract however many of uh, the elect that will be delivered by way of the chariots, which is a small remnant. The rest of the people that are within this particular country, which is the United States of America, which is known prophetically as Babylon the whore, will be destroyed all right the scripture says in the book of isaiah the 10th chapter that the consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness and within that consumption you're going to have israelites that are destroyed within that consumption and what's going to cause the consumption thermonuclear destruction which is going to happen once world war three heats up to a particular point all right once it heat up and that will take place after the MOTB is established, which is the RFID CHIP and the brain CHIP. Isaiah the 10th chapter verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty power. Now, when you go into the word for remnant, the word there is sha'ar within the Hebrew, and it says rest, residue, remnant, remainder. All right, remainder. The root of that sha'ar means to be left over, to be uh, um, left behind, you know, basically to be preserved. There's a scripture in the book of uh, Second, e um, Second Ezra, which says, blessed are those that are left behind. Because only those that are left behind will escape the destruction, all right, will escape the destruction that, that comes upon the world via this nuclear apocalypse, all right, the nuclear catastrophe that's going to happen. 
the book of uh, Second Ezra, the 13th chapter, verse 16. For as I conceive in mine understanding, war unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more will be to them that are not left behind. See? So woe meaning destruction. Okay? Woe meaning destruction. Now, into the article, it reads, as, uh, and this is the title of an article from Zero Hedge. Zelensky tries to reassure Hollywood's A-list a-listers at golden globes there will be no third world war when we first heard the ukrainian president vladimir Zelensky would make a virtual appearance at the 80th annual golden globe awards tuesday night in order to update the audience and american public on the status of the conflict we thought it was a joke it should be remembered too that the oscar awards uh, rejected efforts for Zelensky appearance last year, though he had, uh, though he did give an emotional speech at the Grammys last April, you know, and this guy just, just, uh, um, he would never receive a Grammy in, in, in real life, you know, so he just wanted to feel, you know, uh, um, the energy of the, of the moment, you know, how it feels to be at the Grammys. <laughs> You know, being a, a, a actor and a comedian. But anyways, it says, but like with much else connected with Zelensky and the unprecedented pandering of American institutions for a foreign leader, it was all too absurdly real. He told the audience, Hollywood A-listers, that there will be no World War, there will be no Third World War, citing Ukrainians' momo, uh, momentum on the battlefield. The war in Ukraine is not over yet, but the tide is turning and it's already clear who will win, Zelensky said after being introduced by friend, friend actor Sean Penn, which um, there's a video in which uh, Sean Penn lended one of his Oscars uh, to Zelensky, you know. So this dude is a fell actor in real life and would never really receive an actual Oscar, all right. <laughs> so so he wanted to to make this grand appearance at at the oscars you know to feel you know like he was a part of the 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 the, the celebration you know but anyways he's still playing an acting role and in, in playing the president of the U ukraine is the greatest acting role that he would ever play there are still battles and tears ahead he launched into a bit of a history lecture akin to uh, his December in-person congressional speech reminding the television viewer audience that the Golden Globe Awards first got its start during World War II and compared the current Russian invasion to the struggle for a right of a new generation to know about the war only from movies. That when Zelensky sought to assure Americans against what becomes a legitimate outreaching concern cons, uh, concern uncontrollable escalation between the u.s and russia the first world war claimed millions of lives the second war claimed tens of millions of them there will be no world war three it is not a trilogy Zelensky said promising that ukraine will stop the russian aggression with the help of the free world so no you won't because Russia is set up through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, to uh, uh, play a major part within World War III, which we're going to grab that scripture later on in the lesson. But they're set up through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So you won't be able to stop them from doing what they're set up to do. You would not be able to stop or prevent World War III. Because it is the purpose of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. The book of Isaiah 14 and 22. For I will raise up against them, said Yahweh of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and the remnant and the son and nephew, said Yahweh. I will also make it a possession for bitters in a pool of water. I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, said Yahweh. So in World War III, destruction will come upon the great whore, which... 
uh, Babylon is a spiritual name for the U.S. And as Yahweh said, I will make it a possession for the bitters in a pool of water. I will sweep it with the beast of destruction. The beast of destruction represents the thermonuclear wind from all of the 200 million nuclear warheads that are going to detonate within this place, which is going to cause that nuclear wind, that nuclear winter, the nuclear destruction, all right, the, um, the nuclear fire sweeping through the land as a wave, which is going to, is going to cause, you know, a lot of destruction. Matter of fact, in the book of Joel, and bear with me, Baba Kusha, as I go to it, and I'll also grab another scripture in the book of Joel, the second chapter, and beginning at the fifth verse, like as the noise of chariots on the top of the mountains shall they leap, like the noise of flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, a strong people set in battle array, which is not an actual people. This is speaking about the ICBM missiles with the multiple nuclear warheads in them. Before the face of the pe uh, before their face, the people shall be much pain, as the face, uh, as all faces shall gather blackness. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. All face faces shall gather blackness. Yeah, because the scriptures say when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, like a woman in travail. They're gonna say, well, I thought that you said that there will be no World War Three. I thought that you said that there would be no trilogy, but once they hear those sirens and, 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 and they're warning them, brace for impact, you know, find shelter, whatever you can. All right. They're going to be much afraid when they see it on television. All right. That the, that the missiles have been launched and that they, they will impact in 30 minutes. They're going to be much afraid. They shall run. Like mighty men, they shall climb the walls like men of war. They shall march everyone on his way. They shall not break their ranks. Even though you have uh, uh, hypersonic glide missiles, such as the Vanguard missile of Russia, they can go around, you know, um, missile defense systems. They can, they can go from being detected by radar, you know, and they can... All doing all of this while move while moving at hypersonic speeds, while moving at Mach 20. All right, they're not gonna break their ranks, meaning that if it's destined to hit Michigan, to hit Detroit, it's not gonna end up in, in, in Hawaii, it's not gonna end up in Japan, it's gonna hit the target that is designated to hit because you how about Shmiel was shine. Is going to guide it and make sure that it goes to where it's supposed to go. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his paths. When they fall upon the sport, they shall not be wounded. And this right here proves that it's not speaking about actual soldiers, men or women. Because if they're thrust through with the sword or shot, they'll die. So this is speaking about intercontinental ballistic missiles. They shall run to and fro in the cities. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter into the windows like a thief. And what does it say within the book of 2 Peter, the third chapter? The day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night in which the, hell the elements are, uh, um, shall burn and be on fire. Roughly paraphrasing. So... These ICBM missiles are going to cause great destruction. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their sign. Because when they when they detonate, they're going to cause a nuclear winter. Now, going from here to the book of 2 Ezra, the 15th chapter. And going to the 40th, 40th verse, the great and mighty clouds shall be puffed up full of wrath and the star that they may make all the earth afraid and them that dwell therein and they shall pour out over every high and imminent place and horrible star, which is speaking about the thermonuclear mushroom clouds and it's speaking about the ICBM uh, um, missile warheads that are going to go um, 
they're going to be falling from heaven, looking like fallen stars. Fire and hell and flying swords. Swords don't fly. Okay? So this is this is metaphoric for the ICBM missiles. Fire swords and many waters, all the fields may be full in all rivers with the abundance of great waters. And they shall break down the cities and walls and mountains and hills and trees and woods and grass and meadows and their corn. And they shall go steadfastly to Babylon and make her afraid. And they shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all the wrath shall they pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and the smoke go up unto the heavens. And all they that be about her shall be well her. Which it mentions the same thing within Revelation the 18th chapter. So this is the purpose of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Isaiah the 14th chapter verse 26. This is the purpose that is purpose upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. Yeah, the hand of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for judgment. All right, because you nations are going to be gathered into this great war's war to fight against each other. And eventually the ICBM missiles are going to be shot out. The angels are going to come down and get involved in the war. Yahweh Shai himself is going to get involved in the war. And the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be gathered from the destruction that is caused by the thermonuclear destruction. Verse 27. For Yahweh of hosts have purpose and who shall disannul it. And his hand is stretched out and who shall turn it back. So you can't stop this from happening in the earth. You can't disannul this. You can't say, oh, oh, it's not going to happen. Nigga, you ain't nobody. Who the hell you think you is? All right? To say that it ain't going to happen. Who is you? Uh, who mans is this? Somebody get your mans. Anyways, the book of Revelation 8 and 13, it says, And behold, and I beheld, Salakia, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound, which each woe represents one of the, the world wars. All right, you have World War I, which was, uh, um, it began on July 28th, 1914, and it claimed around 40 plus million lives. You have World War II, which began September 1st, 1939 through September 2nd, 1945, and it claimed around 85 plus million lives. So World War III is going to happen because the scripture says, whoa, 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 which proves that there will be a third war's war, which is going to claim upward in the hundreds of millions, if not billions of lives. Okay. Now, Revelation 9 and 12, it says, One war is past, and behold, there come two wars hereafter. So, World War I passed already, World War II passed already, and World War III has to happen. Revelation 11 and 14, the second war is past, and behold, the third war cometh quickly. So, when would the third world war be fought? Well, we're in it right now. You have a proxy war that's going on between... Uh, uh, the, the whore and the, and, and the beast fighting against Russia, which is Gog and Magog. Okay. America is, is, is fighting a proxy war against uh, uh, Russia. But eventually it's going to be uh, um, grow even bigger than what it is. And once they implement the MOTB within the earth, that's when the, the, the great destruction is going to come. All right. Which... Is going to be uh, uh, the ICBM missiles being shot throughout the earth. And primarily, the main place that they're going to hit and the place where the majority of them are aimed at is Babylon the Great. All right. The whore, which is America. Now, the book of Joel 3 and 1 says this. For behold, in those days and in that time, shall I bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem and I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my lands. 
So World War III is going to happen because Yahweh Bashmel Shai wants to judge you nations for the things that you have done unto his people Israel, the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latinos, the so-called Native Americans, the so-called Seminole Indians in North, Central, and South America and scattered throughout the earth for the things that you have done unto the Israelites. Now, an example of what Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is going to do unto you heathens, all right, you, you natural heathens, can be found in the book of 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, all right, beginning at verse 14. Really, you can read the whole chapter, but just hitting the point. It says, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of Yahweh in the midst of the congregation. Because you had Ammon, you had uh, Moab, and you had uh, uh, Esau that came up to fight against Judah. All right, all of these nations together came to fight up against Judah. But what Yahweh did was he made it to where they began to fight against each other instead. Reading on, and he said, Hearken ye, all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, which Jehoshaphat means what? Jehoshaphat means Yahweh Shepat. So there's a future judgment that's coming, which is going to happen in the valley of Yahweh Shepat. And in the valley of Yahweh Shapat, he's going to make all of the enemies of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and the children of Israel fight against each other. Reading on, there said Yahweh unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of the great multitude, for this battle is not yours, but Yahweh's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. And ye shall find that at the end of the brook, you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel, or Juriel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of Yahweh your power. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go ye against them, for Yahweh will be, you, be with you. Now jumping down to verse 22, and when they began to sing and to praise Yahweh, yeah, because uh, uh, King Jehoshaphat had singers singing unto Yahweh, all right, and praising Yahweh. Yahweh set an ambush against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which will come against Judah. They were smitten for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came, uh, came uh, toward to watch uh, to the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. See, so the same thing is going to happen but on an even larger scale within the time to come, which is, is this World War III. Going to the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter, and going to the 13th verse, and I saw three un unclean spirits like fogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets, and they are the spirits of devil working miracles, which go unto the kings of the of of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of Yahweh. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together in the place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon, all right, which is Harmagadwan, which means what? The mountain of troops or the valley of troops. So Yahweh Bashim Abashai is gathering these nations into his great judgment, which is in the valley of Yahweh Shapat, uh, so that he can bring his Mashapatim, his judgment upon them. And one of the nations that will play a prominent uh, part 
within this great wars war would be the nation of Russia. Okay. Which in the Bible, they're known as uh, Gog and Magog. And they're also known in biblical prophecy as the Medes in certain places. Ezekiel 38 and 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith Yahweh power, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Which when you look up Meshach, all right, it says that uh, Meshach was situated by the Euxine Sea, which today will be the, uh, the Black Sea. So this shows you that uh, Gog and Magog in this particular prophecy represents Russia. Okay. Now it says, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth in all thy army, horsemen, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. The hooks being in the raw, the, the jaws of you know, Gog and Magog or within Russia is similar to putting a bit, you know, or brittle inside of a horses or inside of a, a um, one of the, the, the beast of burdens mouth, you know, like putting a, um, a, a ring and a snot or nose within a bull, you know, so that you can turn it whithersoever you want it to be turned. And that's what Yahweh has done unto Russia because he wants to turn them back into that mind state that they were in during the Soviet Union, you know, and during, you know, the Cold uh, um, War. He wants them to be in that mind state in which they entered into that mind state and they're at the point where they don't give a damn, all right? Uh, um, they're not taking any shit anymore, you know, from the West and that uh, they're in the mind state that, look, we'll use ICBM missiles if we have to defend our country. So that is the mind state that Yahweh Bashem Shai has put them in. Now reading going, it says Persia. It says Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with sword and shield, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomer and all his quarters and all his bands and the people with thee. Be thou prepared. And prepare for thyself thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a garden unto them. So you're going to have allies that are on the, the, the side of Russia that helps to fight against the whore, that helps to fight against NATO. All right. Even the EU is going to turn against America and NATO. OK, you're going to even have NATO uh, countries that turn against the whore and NATO. This is biblical prophecy. And there's no one that can disannul this. The book of Revelation 20 and 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog together, uh, them together uh, to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. All right. So Satan, which is not the spiritual demon, Satan. But you have the, uh, the the head of the Roman Empire that was wounded unto death. All right. You got the Roman Empire, which came back and was revived. All right. It was revived. All right. You got NATO and the EU and you got the whore. All right. Uh, that is sitting upon that particular beast. All right. This is the revival of the Roman Empire, which uh, sp uh, um. Esau Edom that is ruling through that particular system. All right. They're the physical counterpart of Satan. So eventually this great war is going to pick up, is going to become heated. And within this great war, there's going to be mass casualties. Now I wanted to get, you know, Ezekiel the 39th chapter, but for the sake of keeping the lesson, uh, uh, short you know not too long all right I'll, I'll maybe i'll do another lesson on that and i'll just end it right here but world war three will happen because yahweh bashim yahweh wants it to happen it's not going to be 
uh, put off is not preventable. And in World War Three, all right, all of these nations are going to be gathered together to fight in the Valley of Yahweh Shapat. You're going to have Russia against America. You're going to have the American allies uh, uh, um, fighting on the, the side of America. You're going to have the Russian allies fighting on the side of Russia. All right. Uh, uh, ICBM missiles will be shot off. The Great Whore, which is spiritually and prophetically known as Babylon, which is a name for America. All right. They will be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. It's not preventable. Okay. So it will happen. I hope that this lesson was edifying on praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone that taught us the truth and who rule well. Peace and love, say, taste and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Shalom and the Bible ball, Kwam Bakiyam. Shalom.